Hey everybody, it's Ben and Beta, and uh, today we've got a special guest on the show tonight, but Brian is here, back as almost always, but he's here today. Um, so we do have a special guest, it's kind of going to be a fun episode, I think, and uh, so I'm going to bring the guest on, and then Brian has a question for that guest right off the bat. So this is Craig Metcalf, and we'll talk about where he's from and why in a second, because Brian's going to ask this question, and that might help inform what we're talking about. So how exactly do you pronounce the name of your company? Hey, that's, that's well, my main question. first question right off the bat. Yeah, first question right off the bat. Uh, the name is pronounced Kuat. So phonetically, you might see it as K-O-O-A-T. Um, but yes, Kuat. So and Kuat. we're from, the company's based here in, in Springfield, Missouri. So it's kind of the southwest corner of the state. Nice. Uh, and then follow-up question would be uh, like, like, how did you come up with that name for your company? Like, how, what, sure. what's the? Sure. Yeah, the kind of the origin. Um, well, the, the company's been around he, in Springfield since 2008. And the name comes from, the KU comes from our owner and CEO, uh, Luke Kushmeter. And he started the company with a gentleman by the name of Brian Atkinson. So it's the KU and the AT. So the first two letters from each of their last names um, formed Kuat. That's nice. that's a unique way to do it, but, but it works. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so uh, now that we know how to say the name. What the what's Kuat all about? Like what what do you what do you sell? What do you do? Let's talk about that, and then we'll go from there. Sure. So um, started in two thousand eight, um, and really came onto the scene, disrupting the bike rack world. Um, coming into a market that was pretty well dominated by a couple brands and disrupting it by offering, you know, something as easy as killer customer service, but just lightweight, intuitive, um, industrial designed, and, you know, just meant for the end user to get out and, and go seek adventure. Um, from that time frame, we have evolved and, and really... Um, afforded the opportunities to jump into other categories by, you know, really putting forth our awareness and, and training into the local bike rack shop. Um, we Kuat grew the brand and, and have grown enough, um, like I mentioned, that we're able to kind of take on other projects like skiing snowboard racks and kayak racks. And last year, we uh, Kuat launched into kind of the cargo management world with a bed rack system, which is kind of what brings me um, here. Um, but yes, this the the bed rack system is is pretty new to our brand and to um, you know our assortment, um, and but we're really excited to just continue to spread the awareness um, and and show customers. Um, of what we have to offer yeah and that's uh, that's how we ended up meeting um basically is because of this rack and um so brian and i you know we're we're newer to this game of overlanding and uh i've just got my new tacoma um two weeks ago basically is where we're at at this point um but i've been looking at racks for almost a year i would say i've been looking at all the different possibilities of what you might be able to purchase out there <clears throat> And uh, one of the things that uh, that was that's great about living where we live is we're not very far away from the Overland Expo at Mountain West in Loveland, Colorado. So last year I, I went up to look at many different things. I was looking at tents and I ended up kind of choosing the tent company based upon that trip, which was great. And, uh, and then racks. And I just remember walking around to all these different things and just, just like, you're just like a kid in a candy store. Like, that's a cool rack. That's a cool rack. That's a cool tent. And it was near the end of the day, and we ended up coming around to, to where the, the Kuat um, booth was. And I, I knew I'd seen this rack. I wanted to see it. And I was like, oh, there it is. So I started looking at just the construction of it and started talking with the reps there. And it just the versatility of it was what I was looking for. It's it shaped so well for the vehicle. Uh, and the fact that you can run it in mid-height, full-height, 
um, with all the accessories or without them. And it's very light. Like those were all things that really attracted me to it. So I was talking with the rep and I was like, you know, it'd really be cool if at some point, you know, you could somehow like kind of close everything in and keep it locked up if you needed to do that. And the rep was like, yeah, you know what? Just just stick with us for a little bit. Something might be coming. And I think like a month later, then you announced your panel, your uh, exoskeleton panel kit. And uh, so that was pretty cool. But I mean, you guys have done an amazing job with this product. So you just want to talk a little bit about how, like, how did you get into the space and what, like, how did you design this this exoskeleton kind of product? Sure. Um, as far as going into the space, uh, um, from a company standpoint, you know, I, I would say it's a it's a great progression. You know, to continue to bolster our assortment um, and. I feel like because Kuna does such a, you know, killer job at just industrial design, um, we definitely take taken notice over the, you know, over the last few seasons, the opportunity um, that uh, a brand like ours can have not only on, you know, how the product looks, but how it functions and how it, you know, fits on on vehicles. Um, so that was, I think, a big. You know, um, analyzing point and realization to you know that that helps jump off or kickstart you know the r d team that you know projects get put into motion um and then uh sorry what was the what was the next question well then when you started looking at like what you were going to design like what you know a lot of people just have full height racks or sure. mid height racks that's all they do so you chose a product that could be kind of like a transformer, like sure. you can do multiple things. So how did you come to that design? Yeah, um, I, I just meeting one of the maybe internal requirements um, that Kuat has just, you know, put on itself about when we're entering a category, we're entering in a way that's really bringing change um, to how the rack, you know, is whether it's how it's assembled, how it's used, how it's how it can be added to um and and then doing that in a way that is you know also differentiating from what's currently out there big bulky you know chunky um uh designs yeah i think with that was is and will will bring on um our company's you know span on this category and, and on um on the cargo management category, so. Excellent. Brian, you got any more questions? Well, well I, I mean, um, I, I had I had one as far as like the whole industrial design part goes. Uh, with that, You started with uh, bike racks back in 2008. Yes. Um, and, and you've grown so much more from there, but um, as as like safety features and different things have changed with cars, you know, the, the backup camera, has become more and more prevalent to the point where I think even now, uh, as of now, it's like a requirement to have a backup camera on vehicles as far as a safety feature. Like, what kind of we'll call it a hiccup did that potentially cause with your uh, with your uh, development team to be able to have bike racks that still allowed those kind of safety features to do their function or perform as they were required? Sure, and as quickly as automobiles are changing and trucks are changing and and electronics are being put into to the vehicles, yeah, quickly um, things impede and will set off those sensors once you start bolting things in and around. Um, I, I feel like Kuat, we're doing a really good job about leading the industry, about bringing the safety features. You know, on the bike side, we offer a model with integrated um, brake lights, turn signals, and just running lights. So designing products that um, work with the safety features and not against it uh, or the features that that come on the vehicle um, I feel like are something that we're we're kind of pioneering and, and putting that thought into the design uh, with this with our ibex truck rack system we offer a third brake light that you can hook up on the farthest bar away from the vehicle um, because we know that most likely there could be some obstructions uh, just uh, along the tailgate. So um, yeah, safety and awareness is something that through all the design process is getting talked about. 
Yeah, and like I love that you have this configurator because I did I played around with it quite a bit on the site, and this is just nice to be able to picture out basically your vehicle and what it's going to look like, and it's just what it looks like. I would say <laughs> almost exactly. Yeah, it's really neat. We are we are uploading as many vehicle um, combinations as we can, and there's quite a few on there. Um, we're also actively putting products that we offer on to this configurator visualizer. Uh, but yeah, this this is an amazing tool. Um, there's a few images up in the top right corner that yeah you can you can kind of really, you know almost real world you know see how this is going to look when you're when you're out on the trail so um, great way to we're you know, changing all the things in there ben. I, was, I was half expecting to see like a sims character with the green diamond over their head come over and like check out the vehicle and all the <laughs> and all the configuration yeah, yeah. that would be pretty cool the other cool thing is is on that list it, this will build it, it out for you so you know skews you can take it into a shop uh, so all that time and effort and, and research isn't going to be lost. You'll have you'll have a good ballpark of of what you've created. Yeah, this is a great tool, and it's something that a lot of other companies definitely do not offer. So I think this is this is it's becoming more common, but there's still a lot of companies that don't offer this kind of thing. So it's pretty cool. I love this is a great tool. Again, well designed. Um, so the it's been out about a year, right? Something like that. We the Ibex hit retailers uh, late summer. So late the, summer, okay. The, this is a real you know, we we've had a big push into SEMA and then through the fall, um, and we're I feel like we're in a great spot to continue to meet you know customer demand for the rack um, this year and um, and a lot of neat ex accessories to come forth with that ecosystem. And so that kind of brings me to like how, how we got to where we are now. And um, so I reached out. So I, again, full transparency, I'm a, a Kuat ambassador. So you did send me these things, right? So that, that's important to note. Um, but this was the rack I was choosing no matter what. And um, I got a few more accessories than I might have done otherwise, which is great because I get to test them out. But um, like the everything about this was it was it's for somebody who is uh, how did I put it before Brian? I'm mechanically inexperienced, not challenged, but inexperienced. <laughs> and so for somebody who doesn't uh, doesn't put a lot of these types of things together, like you know, I, it's IKEA furniture. I've gotten really good at that kind of stuff, and this is actually not that much harder than that. Other than you have some torque specs and some of those things you have to think about. And it wasn't it was very easy to put together, which I think was great. Um, and I have more videos on, on some of that stuff. I'll have a, a, a more in-depth video on it. But the, the, just the product quality was it, it was a, just fantastic. I mean, just how well everything was packaged. I, I was actually surprised when I opened this box because if you saw there, it was it was pretty tore up. I was like, I, something's going to get scratched in here. But I opened it up and everything was in perfect condition. And the only person who scratched anything would have been me because I decided to build it on my garage floor without putting like a blanket down or something. And that was maybe plus, not the best, <laughs> the best plus, video. Well, not recommended, you did it on your own. You were able yeah. to do it on your own. Yes, building it, you can totally build this by yourself. Even somebody who is uh, mechanically inexperienced can do this. Um, and my wife was gonna help me, but she was having some back issues when, at the time. And so I just said, well, I'm gonna go and see what, what I can do by myself. Um, and I ended up being able to build it um, without too many, too many problems. I did run into one problem, which I do believe was my fault. And that was in um, when you, uh, like these pieces right here that we're seeing right in here, um, in order to make it mid-height, you need to take them apart and take the, there's a middle piece out. And when I was putting it back together, you you included, you can actually see the piece right there. You included the, the bit basically to be able to do that with um, both an impact wrench but then I put it on my torque wrench and I just, it was, it's really hard to hold that piece together <laughs> and, because they're kind of small. And what I ended up doing was I twisted it a little bit and I broke the bit off at, on the end. Um, and so then I had to make a trip to Harbor Freight and I got like for $17, I got a whole set of things, you know, Harbor Freight's great. And it, it's not proprietary hardware, which yeah. I think it's, yeah, something great to note. So it's, it's nothing proprietary that we have that, you know, you couldn't common resource. Exactly. And, and I think, you know, most people have all the things they need 
you know, some people aren't going to have torque wrenches. I decided to go out and get that because if we're since we're getting into overlanding, I wanted to make sure that I had those available for whether it's tire changes or something falls off and I need to put it back on whatever. Um, I can I can torque things up and make sure that there's right specs. And so I had that stuff. I think there's gonna be people who don't have them, and it, you just have to you know be careful not to over tighten. I think that's the hard the hard part for some people, right? Like mm -hmm. it's probably more likely you'll over tighten than under tighten all that stuff. I would say. Um, but it went together so easy. And uh, once it was finished, which I think I have a couple of pictures here, like I just put it up. Uh, I used your foam and I put it so it didn't scratch. And I just kind of set it there until I had uh, coated my vehicle and got that all taken care of. Um, and then I, I was like, you know what? I think I can probably lift this on the back of my truck. I and mean, I did. <laughs> I didn't film that because so it's probably not recommended, but uh, I was able to do it. And uh, so like the, the before and afters here, if you want to take a look at this, this is sort of what the truck looked like when I was done coating it with the new tires and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then um, after that, I went ahead and put on, let's see if I, I think I have videos of this as well. Here we go, we'll just kind of skip through me talking. And that's what it's gonna look like there on, on the end. And uh, again, went on really easy. The inside, the, the, uh, to clip it to the inside of the bed, that was super simple as well. All the parts are really beefy. I mean, it's just impressive. Like I was just impressed throughout the whole the whole thing. Uh, I never frustrated. I was never mad. <laughs> I, I'm definitely somebody, and I think a lot of people are. Like you put together IKEA furniture, you get very frustrated during that. And I never got frustrated with this. It was actually fun to put together. So again, I think you did a great job with it. <laughs> um, so we a uh, couple accessories we put on right away were the long molly, the, the full size molly panel, and two of the mids. Uh, it's small molly panels and uh, we're going to put an antenna mount on there too and when i head to four by four colorado to get the tent on they're going to run the wire back to that for me so i don't that's something i don't think i should do myself <laughs> so they're going to do that um but yeah I, I was excited about putting all this on and then i have some of the other accessories are I, I haven't done the third break right i might bring that along when i do that too and see if we might want to add that um the other th cool part and for new tacoma owners your, uh, if you have the digital rear view mirror, you can still still use it in the low and then the mid height rack, and it still works perfectly. So that's also something to note. Once I put the tent on, it won't work anymore. But anytime we take the tent off, I can still leave it in the mid height and still use the digital rear view mirror, which is that's a great great thing too. So and you didn't even know you were designing for that, but it works. Ah. <laughs> and kind of, uh, we, it offers a, a just a plethora of T channels. So I'm excited to see what. Um, what the industry can help create too, which I think is really neat. Yeah, uh, and you know, like I, I have the the grab handle. So some of the some of the things only work in the full height is my understanding. So I think the bottle opener, the grab handle, uh, and then the uh, the front molly panels all require it to be in full height for that to to attach. The, or, the uh, front uh, will work in the mid height. It will. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll have to check it's it out. Kind of how it's okay. angled down and, and connects across. Um, okay. So I'll definitely you use that if you're if you're even in the mid height if you're still putting a ton of gear up there it's great and then you have more storage. Yeah, and I like one of the things I wanted to put on that was uh, I I have a tire inflation system from uh, Thor's Lightning and it, it'll it'll clip onto the mollies in the back and I can just put that stuff on the back and just grab that if I need it to deflate oh, uh, and then for inflation too and so I was like that'll be perfect just clip on the back there and just grab it out of the side so. Yeah, definitely probably use Did that. Have, so even on, this is one of our Molly panels, but even on the the mid height or the full height, kind of one, one little subtle nuance is these small holes are aligned perfectly to use uh, Max Trax OEM hardware, which is neat. So the spacing just lines up to where you don't have to supplement so you can click stuff on. Um, so that's something that... Nice. It is kind of a neat, um, just neat thing. And then the, the spacing is just, should be a, a kind of a platform or a playground or stepping off point to click in and kind of create all your attachments. Yeah, it, it's gonna be interesting to see where this all goes as we build this out further and further along uh, along the way. But I'm excited. This is all, it's all aluminum. It's all uh, B6 Tiger powder coated aluminum. So. Super lightweight, really strong. It's definitely very lightweight, and it is it is strong too. I I I 
the lightweight part was great because when I lifted up the panel, I'm like, this doesn't weigh anything. And because one of my big concerns is uh, both, I think, for Brian and I is is like payload. You know, the Tacoma only has 1,200 pounds. Like the Ranger has 1,500. Like another 300 pay pounds of payload would be really nifty if I could have that. So we're going to be right there when we're – it's Misty, myself, and our dog. Like we're going to be pretty close to the, the edge of that payload almost every time we go out. Um, so – it was nice to see that those were light. Um, that helped out a lot because I actually had budgeted the rack to be about 90 pounds. And when it came in at 60, I was like, this is great. Now I've got room for something else if we needed. <laughs> yeah, real good strength to weight ratio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So excited you went out and bought yourself a donut. I, I got the weight now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so what other accessories um like we can go back and look at the uh look at the website but what are some of the other like most popular accessories for for your racks from kuwa or what if and, and then also like so i'm a product person and one of the things i think is fun about products is to see not how people misuse your products but how they use a product like how they come up with different things with your product that you just didn't intend but you're like that's an interesting and kind of cool idea have you had any of those yet sure um the, the it, it's amazing the amount of retractable tonneau covers and how it doesn't seem like there's a ton of some you know um, universality between you know the more we learn I think like T channel depths and widths and spacing and makes and models that's been a real fun you know interesting uh, you know um, I think challenge to take on so we're we're finding um still it's 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 a real this is this rack that that we have the ibex is creating not only an overland um, demand but just a real neat you know everyday job demand that because it works with retractable tonnes so you don't have to give up you know the retracts or the ultra groove or the eg you know some of these retractable tonnes that you're going to need monday through friday and then you can put your tent on you know maybe on the weekend when you're getting out so seeing kind of drawing the the newer design of racks that can be used to, to carry the nine to five gear on and then also being able to overland it out um is, has been really cool to i think see develop and, and will continue to develop um on the bike rack side who had i feel like has always pushed the boundaries for trying to carry big, heavy, wide tires. Um, and so there were there, there were some, some you know, wild things. I, I feel like early on, you know, with e-bikes, you know, even 10 years ago, eight years ago, when, when fat tire and, and e-bikes were, were really starting to you know, catch the bike shop's eye and, and being carried, um, it, it was wild to see how some of those were carried. And, tra and transported prior to maybe the racking industry catching up with appropriate racks to carry. Um, now it's really it's really fun to see, you know, like the Cirons or the Super Seventy Threes or some of you know the heavy heavy e bikes that you see in the overland industry, you know, on the back of every Sprinter or you're toting around and using them as a means, you know, to maybe zip around or zip into town. Um, but that I feel almost like is driving, you know, the industry to say, "Hey, these products are available. We are going to transport them. You know, we would love appropriate, you know, racks to continue to transport them." Um, and so it, it, that it's it's been neat to help Kuat continue to, you know, fall. You know, one be proactive, but understand that we'll make a product that there's a demand to create it out there. So the big heavy stuff is it's been awesome for for our brand to have the 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 racks to transport it so yeah that's cool um so i I'm, i brought up the site here so we can uh i it's it's funny like you mentioned weight because it feels like everything just gets heavier and heavier and heavier um like we bought a fridge and i think it's gonna be a really good fridge but it's like 55 pounds and it's like and you put that if you do do a fridge slide now you're at like 80 um, 85, 90 pounds between just that one item. And it gets to be, 
it gets to be a lot. So when you're trying to lend like you said, people want to put their super heavy mountain bikes on there or their e-bikes on top of that. It's like, whew, you got to have some pretty strong stuff to carry all this and then hope that your tires still turn when you hit the gas pedal. Yeah. <laughs> so here are some of the accessories that are already available. So we've seen some of the, we have the mid mollies and the narrows, and then you've got um, the, the full height, and then the crossbar, uh, there's our crossbar, crossbar riser kit along with the front molly, which I will install now that I know that I can do that. I thought I didn't think there was going to be a way for me to do that, but I will. Um, the third third bike, uh, third brake light kit, which is cool. And then you got a bunch of different mounts. Um, I've got the antenna mount coming up and then the bottle opener. If we go full height, we'll do that. Grab my handle as well. I think that'd be pretty cool. You got jack mounts. Uh, your piston mount, I, I saw that in action and that was really cool. So maybe I'll click into this in a second here. Um, I don't know if we can, can we buy it now? Can we look at it? Uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's been really cool. It's, it allows, we have a, that single, we have a single tray bike rack that is all flush mount or T-tracked on the bottom. And in our bed rack system, it, those mounts click in and kind of hang real flush and integrated, yes, just like that into the side. And then that track system tray can click in on those mounts. And it's really cool because a lot of the times, you know, you might have a teardrop or be towing something, but you you still want to carry your bike. So this allows you to take advantage of the space that's really not being used and not it really impeding on your over or on your tent or, you know, if your gearbox is over there and then you're still getting that bike to the campsite or to your you know, wherever you're going. Yeah. When I saw that overland expo, I mean, I don't have, I don't have mountain bikes. Um, it's something I've considered, but I don't know if I'm going to get into it or not, but I would, this, the way this attached, I was like, that is very innovative. <laughs> and it was super cool to see how the, like, the, they used the, the, uh, like shocks there to do that. It was just, it was great. So yeah, it's a cool product. It keeps it outside of everything, like you said, and you don't have to try to you know, mount it to the hitch because then you lose, you know, departure angle, which sucks. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a pretty nifty, pretty nifty design. I would say you can see some of the other accessories, grab handles and so on and forth, so forth on this one too. I like yeah. that. And we hope to Bye. have, Kuat hopes to have, you know, as, as we continue to grow within this industry and even other industries that are maybe not, you know, they're still truck rack related, um, like I said, because we're offering so many T channels. It's, it's been neat some of the SEMA builds to see like boat speakers and light, you know, you know, some of the, the wild configurations that you see. But I feel like this the the Ibex is just such a neat platform to, to create. Yeah, I agree. Like it's and, and it's gonna grow. Like you said, it's not even a year old really. So it's gonna keep growing. And that, and that panel kit I was gonna mention that we're starting with that panel kit for the second and third gen tacos with more make and models to follow this year nice so, so with the with the different accessories that you've come up with and the different different products i'm curious have you been approached by other companies to do like some sort of partnership i mean when the electric bikes came out you know was was there any talk about uh partnering with any of them so that way you would have a, a kuat branded electric bike or some sort of uh, bike rack that was specific to uh, an electric bike? There is. This is going to be a great year for uh, not only our continued um, truck rack awareness, but other really cool products throughout the year. Um, so, you know, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of neat stuff coming out this year. For, um, for partnerships, yes, we we have been able to to work with Rivian for the last couple of years and and create one of those single trays that works with their um, with their bar system, um, and as a company, we're relatively young, uh, but are eager and continue and 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 wanting um, to grow our partnership, you know, uh, assortment and and are actively doing so. So I, I would foresee. Um, many more cool partnerships and projects with you know, manufacturers like ourselves um, within within this space and then even on the bike side 
with you know dedicated transportation you know to the the e-bike e-bikes are not going anywhere and like you said they're just you know they're they're transforming almost the way we get out on bikes um, and who we get out on bikes with and it's really cool and just we just need um it'll be neat to see how that will drive some of the the racks so I mean, yeah, I mean, with the electric bikes, you've got everything from just your kind of ride around the neighborhood type bikes to well, this is a this is basically an electric dirt bike, and we're going to go and just you know throw some dirt, throw some mud. <laughs> it's pretty cool. A lot of options. It's pretty cool. And, and speaking of the the, uh, the Overland Expo demos, that's been a really fun place to to see some of the you know everything from like the Volcon Super Seventy Three styles to their full on 400 pound electric, you know, I almost call them like the wave runners of the land. You know, we just get on and just, it's, it's really neat to see and like touch and feel and ride, you know, all, all these toys. Yeah, I'm gonna get Brian to an Overland Expo at some point. Not gonna be this year, I think. I'm, I'll be, I'm gonna go for sure, but I don't know if I'll get Brian there this year. Maybe next year. The one in, the one in May sounded uh, enticing, but between my oldest graduating and my youngest having a birthday, I just, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Life. Wasn't here for it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, I appreciate you coming on today. I don't we want to take up too much of your evening, um, but it, it was great to have you on. Uh, I am really excited to really put this to the test. Um, like I said, my tent it was delayed a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, so it's going to be like early May when they uh, I get to go back up to Four by Four Colorado to have them put that on. But then it's it's on after that. I, I imagine just about every weekend i'll probably be at least doing one overnight camping adventure and then we've got a couple pretty big ones planned as well so i'm um, excited to do those and test this thing out and see how it works and just keep reconfiguring it till we get it the way we the way we need it but what's great is it can keep changing with our needs and that's one of the main reasons why i like this rack so much so did a great job with it well yeah thank you appreciate it the team always loves to hear um, you know, feedback and especially this new product is, you know, not extra sensitive, but it's new right now. So you know, it's just excited. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd be surprised. I mean, there are a lot of racks out there, but this one is just really well designed. So I, I definitely, uh, you know, if people are interested, go ahead and click the link in the description, take, take a look at what's out there. Use the builder, take a look at what you might want. Right. And then you can always hit the build button. And like you said, you had, you have partners as well that can help install them if you need to but uh, it's, again somebody who's like not challenged but inexperienced you can still do it yourself and if you have two <laughs> people it'll be even quicker and easier for sure so so besides besides the products and everything like is there anything you want people to know about uh the the company and it's and its purpose because i mean you've got the, the future forest initiative going on where you plant a tree with for every rack that's sold or and different things like that going on. It like, looks like on your website, you've got about uh, 685,000 trees have been planted so far, which is awesome. It is. It's, it's something we try not to boast about, but oh, it, we are afforded the opportunity to give back. And so, of course, we want to do whatever we can to continue to keep open spaces open and, you know, our land protected. Um, so, yes, for every, for every product uh, and for every purchase, you know, supporting a kuat will in turn um, do our part and, and work with the national forest foundation um, and you know local organizations that have been either devastated by wildfires or invasive species and um, work to pick a project each year and uh, repopulate that and that's great like anytime we can give back to the environment and try to like make it better for the future generations and for ourselves i think that's that's awesome and i love companies like that as well so absolutely all right any last things you want to share craig before we go for the evening um if you have any questions uh, about fitman at all never hesitate to reach out to kuat.com give us a call um we're in the office monday through friday uh, we love to talk, uh, and we would love to get some coup at life. Come see us out at the expos, the shows. Um, I, if 
if Ben and Brian will have me, I'd love to check back in periodically this season. So, uh, so what's, yeah, what's mean, the next upcoming things? show? Next upcoming show, you can see Kuat. It's actually local here in Springfield. Um, it's called the Moore Expo. Yeah, um, I heard it's coming up um, April nineteenth and twentieth. So it's a really, it's a really fun again to touch and feel all these products. They're all in one central location, and you can have great one-on-one -on -one conversations with suppliers. Are you going to go, Brian? It's 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 in April. All right, and just for listeners, uh, more is M O O R E. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I'll I'll add a link. Let to me see what I got going on in the description too. Yeah. Yep. And we're Kuat's having an open house the day before, so you can come in and do a warehouse uh, headquarter tour. That's cool. Oh, nice. Yep. Well, again, yeah. thank you so April much for coming on. Um, we'll, I'm sorry, go ahead, Brian. What were you going to say? No, I was just reading that it was April 19th and 20th was the, was the Moore uh, Expo. Yep, April 19th and 20th, so check that out. Um, again, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate that, uh, and I appreciate being able to be an amb ambassador for Kuat, uh, and I will do my absolute best to uh, you know showcase the product in you know, every, every light that we can. Uh, we'll definitely have you back on, I think, uh, in July. We're doing a big trip. Uh, Brian, Brian's coming out to Colorado. That one's going to be a several day trip. So I think that'd be a good time to maybe, you know, after that, maybe have you back on and we can see if we have any more feedback on the product or how things went on that. And, uh, that might be kind of fun. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching tonight. Uh, remember to live your life in beta and we'll see you next time. All right. Take care, everybody.